In this video, we're going to take a look at the process of taking a mesh scan, in this case a transmission, and aligning it with other bodies or components in a design in Fusion 360. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about mesh alignment in Fusion 360. Now, in all the other mesh and reverse engineering videos, I mentioned that it's best for us to align our mesh bodies in a coordinate system in the actual mesh editing software. However, the question came in the other day about how would we align multiple meshes based on features inside of Fusion 360. Well, this is something that some mesh programs like Geomagic can do. Uh, however, Fusion is something that we can use. So in this video, we're going to do uh, what I'm going to just call a workaround. It's not a clean or easy process, but it will get the results. So if you want to follow along, you can go to the description of the video and you can download the data set Transalignment. What we're going to be taking a look at is aligning a mesh transmission scan with this cylindrical body. Now, you could do this with multiple meshes. We'll follow and talk about all the different steps in the process that you need to follow. But keep in mind that we are still using features and references off of a scan, which is a bunch of triangles. So the quality of the scan that you use is going to be extremely important. And then we also have a couple things that we should watch out for. So the first part of this process is that we need to bring a mesh into the design. Now, the one that you downloaded already has the transmission inserted, and I'm going to follow the same process by just inserting that mesh. I'm going to use the same mesh file, and this is going to insert it into Fusion 360. Now, this mesh was scanned with the Shining Pro HD scanner, and it was already aligned inside of the XScan software. So if I turn on my origin, it's already at the end of the input shaft. So you can see that everything here is pretty much in alignment. Now this is the best case scenario. The best case scenario is that the design, are they're all based off the same coordinate system reference in the scanning software. Now we all know that that's generally not the case. So we're gonna go over this process and make sure that we do understand it. To make it a bit easier, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mesh body and I'm gonna push it into a component. Now this is again, the first key to this process. We're going to start by going to assemble new component and I'm going to call this trans ref for trans reference. Now each component in Fusion 360 contains its own coordinate system. Now the important step here is that I'm going to just take this mesh and drag it into that component. The reason that this is important is because the coordinate systems are currently aligned. I can now move this mesh around. You can see the coordinate system in the new component and the original coordinate system based on how it was inserted into Fusion 360. So we can use things like move copy. We wanna make sure that we're using components and not bodies. And when we do this, we can just go ahead and we can mess up the alignment so that it's kind of off. I'm gonna capture the position and say, okay. So this is obviously not aligned to the object that I wanna reference. So again, first step in this process is to make a component and make sure that your mesh is inside that component. If you've spent the time to align that mesh to a coordinate system, make sure that you are using that coordinate system reference and not moving anything around before you put it in your component. The next step to this process is if your mesh is pretty heavy. Well, what I mean by that is if it has a lot of triangles and it's really slowing the process down. Generally, what I like to do is copy and paste the mesh and create a remeshed version of it. So I'm gonna right click, simply go down to copy, and we can use our shortcut keys as well, Control C, Control V. You'll notice that when it's pasting it, it looks like it's over here. I say OK, but it's actually in the same location. So I'm going to hide the original, and then with this copied version, I'm going to remesh this. I want to make sure that I preserve sharp edges, preserve boundaries, and I'm going to reduce the density down, uh, let's say 0.1. I think by default it's somewhere at 0.25. I'm going to say OK. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because with a remesh or even a reduce, you can reduce the number of triangles that you have in the mesh file, which means that it just behaves a little bit better in Fusion. This process does take a hit on the processor, but keeping the heavier, more detailed mesh hidden or even right-clicking and making it unselectable can simplify the process. 
Every time we hover over a mesh body, it's going to try to highlight all the triangles, and this is generally what slows fusion down. So having a remeshed version of it, and then a fully detailed version of it, can simplify that process. So again, step one, make a component for your mesh to be inside of. Step two, remesh or reduce the mesh count if needed. Now, step three is where things start to get a little tricky. Now, for this, I'm going to turn off the coordinate system for now. But what we want to do is begin making some features with inside of this component that we can use as references. You can see currently my component is active, which means anything I do is going to be inside of this component. To get started, if we want to create a construction plane based off geometry, we need to do this in direct edit mode. When we're in direct edit mode, this will give us direct access to selecting specific faces on the mesh. So for example, if I go to construct and create a plane based on three points, I can select points on the front face of this bell housing of the transmission. And again, we're using the average. So basically what we're doing is we're selecting a scanned reference and we're getting as close as we can. From here, if we want to create other planes that are perpendicular, we would want to use this and make them at 90 degrees, for example. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use that as sort of a test or a reference on how we can do this. The next thing that we want to do is finish direct editing and then create a mesh section sketch. The mesh section sketch is going to be based again on this body. And then for our plane selection, I'm going to show the origin and I'm going to use this default origin up front here. And I want to zoom in and note that we are seeing a mesh section on that mesh body. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to find that sketch, right click and edit. I'm going to double click the mouse wheel. Notice that everything is still kind of rotated in a skew. That's OK for what we're doing. We're going to go to our create menu, fit curves to mesh section. I'm going to be using the circle option. I'm going to select this and it's going to automatically apply a circle based on the, the default tolerances. You can see the max curve deviation is 0.76 millimeters. Now, that's not great. And that's simply because the mesh reference has a big hole in the side of it. Now, hopefully you have a good mesh reference. We can go down to the throw out bearing here, or we can find another reference that is a good reference for us. For example, if you wanted to find the location of the starter motor, you can come up here and you can place a circle based on that arc. For us, this is going to work fine for the example. Just keep in mind that you might end up spending a little bit more time in this process. Now that we have this reference, we can go back to our solids and we can create an extrude from it. I'm going to rotate this around and just simply pull this back. Now this extrude is basically the small or tapered down end of the input shaft. So it's going to taper out from there and then we'll have a spline on it that fits inside of the clutch. But for our purposes, this is going to go into the back of the bearing that's inside of the end of the crank or depending on your setup it's just going to make sure that it fits into the rest of the assembly so from here what we're going to be doing is using that reference now i'm going to hide the origin once more i'm just going to pretend that it's not there but what we want to do is now we want to go back to the top level of our design and we want to put these two things together so what we're going to do is decide how we want to put them together what tools we want to use the first thing I want to take a look at is move copy. Now, the reason that move copy can be handy, if we show the origin, we have the option to go point to point or point to position. Now, using these options, we could go from the origin point of our coordinate system reference to the origin point on this coordinate, and it would work just fine. But that's not really what we want to do here. The next option that we have is to use the align tool. Now, the align tool gives us a couple of additional benefits. So from here, when we use a line, for example, I can select the end of this shaft, and then I can go over here and select the cylindrical opening. Now, when I do that, notice that it snaps them into place. We can change the position. We can rotate things around if we want to change the angle. But essentially what we did was we snapped it into that location. Make sure that the object is set to component. And in this case, the clutch reference was a body. If it was a component, you might find that you need to ground it in the coordinate system. But either way, this process should still work. I'm going to capture the position and say OK. Now, another option that we could use is under Assemble, we could use Joints. 
We could set our joint motion type to rigid and make a very similar selection process. I like to use a line because this still allows the transmission to be free. I could move it around and make adjustments if I need. Let's hide the coordinate systems and let's just take a look at what we did. So remember the transmission originally was in place because I had those coordinate system references based on the mesh editing software. In this case, it was done in Xscan. But that's not always the case. So we moved it and we rotated out of position. We had it in its own component. And then we used the mesh tools, in this case, direct edit for the mesh to create a reference plane if we needed it for the front section of the bell housing. We also created a mesh section sketch and a representation of the input shaft for the transmission. Then we could use tools like move copy or a line or even creating a joint to position it in our assembly. Now, this process that we looked at was with a single mesh and a solid body, but it should work if you have multiple meshes. You can simply create a component for each one, create the features that you need to reference, whether it's a cube or a cylinder or whatever you need, and then use tools like Move Copy or Align to put them into the correct position. So hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.